Is this the only uh, 2350 that you built with this set of yes. lift arms? This is the first set of lift arms. Okay. When we go to Wyoming, we'll put strain gauges on it because it's still a prototype. Okay. You know, they asked us, could it be done? And we said, yep. And that's why it's really so far out that direction. Okay, so all the controls, what do they do? Yeah, this, I mean, of course, this is all graphic. I mean, it's going to be emulating what's actually happening on the machine. You know, air pressure, oil, how much fuel, your speed, cycle times, and all that is in real time as you see it there. Right. Left and right hand joysticks. This is for steering left, steering right. And what you'll notice is I try to do something, anything that the operator wants the machine to do, that the logic of the programming doesn't let him do it, it has to tell him what. That way he's just not sitting there going, it doesn't work. Right. It always tells him. So steering's there, you've got forward and reverse here. You've got your turn signals for left and right, just okay. in case you're exiting off the interstate. So this is all the steering, and, and it's pretty unique. You sit stationary, the front of the machine articulates. Right. You're staying flat, it's moving. Right hand joystick, you have hoist and lower. Okay. And you've got the bucket curl and bucket rollback. That controls all the loader functions. Yep. The thumb wheel is the same as moving it this direction. Mm -hmm. If I roll the thumb wheel back, the bucket's going to roll back. If I push the roll wheel forward, it dumps forward. And the reason we did that is that you've got some automated buttons here. In operation, when I hit that button, that lift arm is going to go up to a pre-programmed height and stop every time. You set that. If you know what so height it's an you auto. Go, it's, it's an, an auto. auto. So system. you hit that button, the lift arms go up, you approach the truck, you take your thumb wheel, you roll it forward, the bucket dumps, you back up, you hit this button, which automatically returns the bucket down to what you see it right here. Okay. So with that, you eliminate the movement of your wrist, which is a lot of the complaints that the operators will have over time is that wrist wristing action. One thing I absolutely love about the machine is the amount of room you guys so with the cab. A lot of room. A lot of room inside the cab. Yeah, everything's touch screen here. The operator can go in and look at, you know, information actively on the machine or the technician can. He can look at it in a charting form if he wanted to see graphically what things are going on. But everything's touch screen. We don't have a separate keypad. And the computer that makes the machine run is in the cabinet behind us. The computer that makes this nice and pretty sits under the operator seat. Okay. They communicate, but this computer system is not required for the machine to run. If this computer underneath that seat or that display fails, you can still run the machine, and you still know if there's a fault, but you still have a red light and a yellow light permanently hooked to the control computer in the low voltage cabinet. Oh, okay. We intentionally separated control computer from monitoring computer, so that if you had one failure, it wouldn't cripple the machine. Right. And they bought, they bought it to dig, not look pretty, so... Right. Very impressive machine, though. But what is it that made it in Job so let's say for many people, the ruling game, our closer access or proximity to 